Mark Asnan, I'm a documentary photographer represented by Redux Pictures. I'm predominantly an editorial photographer and uh, do uh, long-term personal projects. I've uh, been a photographer for over 20 years. On 9-11, I was uh, under the North Tower uh, working with my uh, assistant, Kevin Johnson. Uh, we were on assignment for Time Magazine. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough, tough day for everybody. Um, thank God we were able to make it home that day. Tell me a little bit about that day. Yeah, we got in the car and, you know, the West Side Highway was closed, but we were able to make it close to Ground Zero in approximately like nine minutes. And on the way, we were on the highway around 60th Street and the South Tower had collapsed. And I remember just banging uh, the center like the middle of the truck really just so upset and crying and just so angry what had happened and we worked our way down and we got to Chamber Street and they said there was no more uh, no more press being allowed south of Chamber Street and the West Side Highway um, you know at the time I thought it was fortunate but I talked my way past the police officer with my assistant and we were walking south, taking pictures, and the North Tower was still burning. And when we got to uh, Vest, uh, I think that's Church in the West Side, you know, just we were about a hundred yards from the entrance with some firemen, and the North Tower it exploded like there was a huge mushroom fireball. And then I heard the firemen yell, "Run!" And as we turned, I saw some fire trucks slightly up the block. Uh, and I said to Kevin, go under the truck. And as I was running, you could feel the intensity of the wind. And I thought, oh my God, it's like a hurricane. You gotta get under something. So I slid under a fire truck. I got under sort of the rear axle and then a fireman came underneath and pushed me in a little further. And um, I didn't know what was happening. I thought the buildings were falling. And then all of a sudden that wind, you know, all in hindsight, I mean, I, I, I didn't know what it was, but I was under the truck and I started to cry because I couldn't breathe and I thought I would be crushed and I was crying and trying to push my way out. And then the fireman just told me, hold on, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it. And then, there was no more like wind and there was nothing hitting my back. And then I could feel the fireman moving and he pulled me out and we were like face to face, but you couldn't see anything. It was completely black and everyone was choking, you know, like you couldn't, him and I were just choking. And there was some light that came over the West Side Highway on the huts, over the Hudson. And I was, I could see the truck in front of me and it wasn't crushed and I thought that's where Kevin went under and I started screaming, Kevin, Kevin, and the fireman started screaming to me like, we got to go, we got to go now, we got to move. He just kept screaming and then I could see to my side there was a, like a civilian like myself who had some water so I walked over to him and I said, can I get some water and everyone was like just spitting up and he said, yeah, but can you help me? I'm blind that I can't see. And I, and I helped him walk up to Chamber Street. And the thing I remember was as I was like going north those few blocks, they were still fine and rushing in, you know, like, which was like something I clearly remember even though your instincts would tell you to go the other way, they were still going in to save people and, you know, pay the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I sat at Chamber Street with firemen, you know, and I was waiting for Kevin and uh, I couldn't find him. And I was asking, you know, policemen, there was like some guy from the FBI and, you know, they all said, you know, nobody can help you. You just have to sit here and, you know, hope. 
And I ran up to North Moore Street and I saw a friend of mine, a French photographer, and he said, listen, you should go to the hospital, you're in shock. And I chose to leave and that's something I'm not proud of. Like that's something that I have to live with that I didn't, um, I left not um, knowing if Kevin made it or didn't make it. And uh, I think that's like, I mean, that's a big thing that I've dealt with since 9-11, that my character, it was a floor of like, of my character or who I was not to, to leave, you know? Um, but thank God he, he, he did make it, you know, and we're still buddies to this day. Um, and then I went home and my wife, when my wife got my kids all out of school, like most pa you know parents had to go to school, my uh, wife came in with my kids and the doorman or the super people were like, oh, he made it, he made it. And she was thinking like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, we saw Mark on New York One, he made it, but he can't find Kevin. And so for my kids, it was uh, like all of a sudden, the younger ones were too young, but my oldest daughter, she was getting calls from her friends, like your dad's on New York One crying. And I didn't realize that day, like not being like a war photographer. I mean, I don't think, in hindsight, it was like a war zone, but it, I didn't realize then sort of what I was entering in, even though I've done some very hard stories like skinheads in the Klan or gangs, this was on another level. Um, It was something, you know, that sort of changed my perspective, you know, um, realized that that's not what I need to do most of all because my first responsibility is not as a photographer, as as a father. I guess I wonder how, you know, you, you say your first priorities are as a father and, you know, when we started the Heart Gallery back in 05, like any time I wanted you to be there, you were totally there and do one thing. You know, it was one email. And I guess I wonder how you feel as a father coming into a project like this with kids, you know, who may have fathers, but they're probably in jail or, you know, shooting up on the streets. I mean, and not in their lives. And kind of how does it affect you to be involved in a, in a project like this? Right. I, I think this project, like I have, there's two things I would think of. Like one, obviously, I think it's the direct, the most important thing would be that these homeless youth would be able to be help like the kids in foster care or be able to help them, you know, the hard project. Um, because they're the ones who need it. You know, I think too many times, you know, as a photographer, as a documentary photographer, we take, you know, we benefit more than the subject. In these projects, the most important thing is that those people, you know, in those tough circumstances that they need to benefit. Um, so that's my primary, you know, objective is that, you know, if one kid can, you know, that I participate in can be helped, you know, that's me giving back. Because I think it, in my 25 years, you know, and what I've observed is most people benefit more from the stories they do than maybe those subjects. And that's just the process. It's not about, you know, the people don't have the right idea, but I think in these kind of projects, you can definitely see, you know, strong results. Like you had, you know, 150 kids that were adopted. That makes a difference. You have 150 healthier young people. It's like, I don't want to be a limousine liberal. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to do something, you know? and. You know, so it's like the th thing I can do professionally is to take pictures and I can get the word out through this project, you know, so professionally that's the skill I have. Uh, I want to tell that story. So I think if people see these images and, he and hear these stories, they'll realize that, oh yeah, that could have been me, 